And we want to take you to Georgia now, where we're learning more about the mother of the high school shooting suspect. The suspect the police say murdered four people and injured nine others last week. 14-year-old Colt Gray and his father, Colin Gray, both charged in connection to that deadly shooting. They were both arraigned as well last Friday. Now, some new details are coming out about mom, Marcy Gray. This is her. She called Appalachia High School 30 minutes prior to the shooting. Reports saying that she had uh, seen a text, um, sent a text rather, where she mentioned speaking to a school counselor. Uh, she also reportedly received a text from her son, CNN reporting her son sent her a text that said, I'm sorry, mom. And after seeing that text, she urged the school to do a check-in immediately. And apparently they tried to find him. He wasn't there. And we know the shooting began after that. So what would cause mom to call the school and warn them of an emergency with their son based on the I'm sorry mom text? Let's bring in retired SLED agent and solicitor Tommy Pope, uh, now attorney in the private sector and a lawmaker. Ooh, Tommy, uh, thinking about this, what, what makes a parent have that response based on such a text? You know, I, I was thinking we've had kind of similar cases, you know, kind of the template for charging the, the parents with the involuntary manslaughter, um, the case we've watched before. But I think... It could have been one of two things. It could have been the dangerous behavior in general. It could have been perhaps she thought he was suicidal. I know, um, you know, you don't know, Did was there a family argument that morning? Was there things of that nature? You know, when she called, you know, to say check on him, you know, she may have been worried about him taking his own life. So there's a lot of pieces behind the scene that we don't know yet of, of how this played out. Clearly there was enough with this father that there's already been a charge there, but it, it may even be the fact that the mother makes his call may be some mitigation if she is found to be more involved or, you know, reckless or whatever phraseology they want to use for, you know, that charge. So I, I think it's a positive for her that she called. I think it, um, could be concern for her son's life or could be something much more egregious um, like what actually happened. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a really fair point uh, you made there, Tommy. If she does have any criminal culpability, the one thing you're right that could uh, legally perhaps uh, negate some of that would be that she did try to warn and did try to stop whatever she thought was going to happen. And so we need a lot more facts, as you know, Tommy. We, we have all the information that we have at this point that we've, we've shared. And she didn't tell the media what she told law enforcement, according to CNN, about her reasons for feeling so panicked. There, there must have been something there, obviously, because any other parent, you know, I'm sorry, Mom, what's that? You, you know, you didn't uh, make your bed, you didn't do your homework, you, you know, um, it could be anything, but to think something like that, uh, we're just going to have to wait and see what law enforcement says. Uh, Tommy, speaking of, what do you think they're doing right now in terms of investigating her? You know, I think it's a credibility issue because, you know, who are they going to get their information from? You know, you, you know, the dad's not going to have a tremendous amount of credibility. If he looks like he's putting something off on her, uh, the son may or may not. Um, so I think we're going to see it's going to have to be some external actions, much like we saw in that previous case that we watched. And so I, I think from an investigative standpoint, you know, it, it, I hate to get back to our law school exams. I told you I didn't want to take it one, but no, <laughs> no or should have known, you know, and, and there may be some, you know, of that type language there, that type of concern. What should she have done? What is reasonable? How should she have acted uh, in that regard? Uh, you know, law enforcement, as usual, have a lot on their plate particularly as it goes to the dad, not so much to the shooter because that's self-evident, but, you know, to the dad and then, you know, even more so to the mom if that's something they determine to pursue. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, Tommy. I've got a clip I want to roll now. This is a clip of an interview with a parent and their son uh, talking about the horrific event last Wednesday. 
I didn't believe it at first. I didn't register. I had to reread um, the message that was sent to me, and I rushed as fast as I could to get over here. Um, parked up the street and ran all the way here until I finally heard from Jaden, and I knew he was okay, fortunately. Um, but seeing the faces of other parents and um, students in panic, it's, it's, it's gut-wrenching. It's, it's awful. We've been talking about that all day, um, how this new quote-unquote normal will be. I don't know walking into those doors um, whenever that will be um, and sitting in the class that you were in when all this went down. The It's going to be hard. It, it, it's just going to be hard. And how we go from here, I, I don't know. It was pretty scary. I know I was two classes away from where it happened. It was in the same hallway as me because the girl in my class had gone to the restroom. She had come back. She had opened the door. I was about to get up to go to the restroom right before I went is when it happened. It was like 10 shots, about a three-second or four-second pause, and then like seven more. So I was very close. So, so you, you heard it. Like, you heard everything. It in my chest. Like, that's how, like, it echoes through the hallways. Like, the sound, like, it hits. Yeah. You, you can't just hear it. You can feel it, too. Right. Mm, you say how you feel it, too. Ooh. Tommy, as I'm listening to that interview, I kept thinking, this family's going to feel it every day for the rest of their lives, probably, aren't they? I think I think that. I think the entire student body is going to feel it. And, you know, it's tough, too. I was thinking about the mom getting the call. You know, that's a call we don't ever want to get. But sadly, the way the world has become, back to you and Sonny talking about how we can't resolve things anymore without violence. Um, that's a fear every parent has, you know, every family member has, that you're going to get some kind of text or call, you know, that, and, and I think what's, to me, more helpless, you know, with law enforcement and everything, I was trained to go toward the problem. But when you're on the outside, you know, they're telling parents, stay out, stay away, you know, I mean, for, for their safety and the safety of the scene. Um, it would be exceptionally frustrating to not be able to get a mom talk about parking and, and running the rest of the way till she could confirm her, her son was okay. Every parent in that community, every you know parent that had a student there feels exactly the same way. And this has repeated itself over and over. You know, you know it's just like roulette. You don't know where it's going to happen next. Exactly, Tommy. Let's take a listen to some of what the sheriff said uh, speaking out to the media. What we're facing, heartbreak. We're heartbroken. A young person brought a gun into a school, committed an evil act, and he took lives, and he injured many other people, not only physically, but mentally. You know, Tommy, I wonder if they've even been able to sleep since this incident. Would you kind of help us understand what it's like when you're law enforcement and you're tasked with an investigation like this one? I kind of touched on it before, you know, one, you're doing, you're, you're trying to get to the bottom of the investigation, but you're also trying to determine, it, and it, it's a burden, but could we have done anything different? You know, uh, you know, we always blame guns and things of that nature, but ultimately, you law enforcement can't be everywhere all the time. You know? You know, we put officers in schools, but magically that doesn't prevent these things. And so I think the toughest thing, the very thing that draws people into law enforcement of wanting to, you know, kind of be the good guy and be the protector is, it, you know, a helpless feeling anytime you lose lives and, and you wonder what you could have done differently. Sure, sure. Um, I want to share with you some of what we were able to extract from Facebook that was posted by the shooting suspect's aunt right after the incident. And uh, we won't read everything verbatim, but the gist of it, uh, she's sympathetic to the families of, of the people who were killed and injured in this. Um, she's also at the same time saying, and I'll direct your eyes to the fifth paragraph, she will not leave her nephew standing alone. She says, when Uvalde happened, I told my own children that only hurt people hurt people. And then she goes on in another post to talk about how she seems kind of stunned that they're charging her 14-year-old nephew as an adult for murder. And she said, are y'all ready to see Palamas blood in full throttle? Palamas being apparently her maiden name. So 
To me, this aunt seems all over the place. I think she was feeling all the feels of, you know, sadness, anger, despair, all of it. She's putting it all out there. And, of course, media outlets like us are going to screen grab it and right. share it. Um, you know, Tommy, when we think about the, the mental health uh, component here, uh, it's, a, it's a big problem, is it not? I, I think it is. I think, you know, for me, what you see here is her... Uh, getting out in the middle of something, but giving some hints like problems at home that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, and uh, no easy answer to this, uh, as we know, uh, but certainly uh, s something that we need to continue discussing. i uh, got to leave it there for time's sake. Uh, Tommy Pope, wonderful insight from you as always. Thank you so much.